Without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. There you are. There you are. <laughs> I, I I didn't turn off the thumbnail. What? So you were really there, but you weren't really there. But now you are there. You're live and in person. Can we mess this intro up again? Every, every I time. was so good, I didn't say anything. I know. I said you nothing. You did perfect. And then, when I say mics are hot, you didn't say a word. Nothing. Yeah, and zipped it. I love that. Nothing. Teachers always do that. Zip. Zip it. I bet you were, I bet you were, I bet I you were talking. One. Talk to the hand. Yeah, the talk head to, isn't listening. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, talk to the hand. Talk to the hand, man. Talk to the hand. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. It's John and I. So funny. He goes, I see you. It's like, you know, he's only like 20 feet away. I mean, you know, it's a really good. <laughs> That's a start. You take more medication. Well, yeah. 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 So, hey, you guys, this is fun. We love these shows where John and I do them together, kind of, and we and we know of, some of you don't, so turn off the channel. So, oh, John, come, don't be mean. We 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 put a few up this month where it's just me. I want you to know about that. We've done some shows that are just me recording lessons, very similar. When our in our art academy, that's how we teach lessons: is just me and the camera and step by step. But when we do these live shows, we like to, you know, kind of interact with our audience when we have an audience, and we like to John and I interact. We tell stories. We have a good time. It makes for great entertainment. So. Anyway, tonight we're going to be doing something uh, kind of different. We're going to take a painting that I had done some time ago, and I'm going to show you how to take something and change it into something else. So I can't show you a thumbnail because I haven't done it yet, but we're going to do it together. and You can kind of follow the design process. So you're going to basically see her reinvent the wheel. Yeah, and, and see what happens is that, you know, I even get this from some of our very accomplished artists. Well, I can follow along exactly when Ginger tells me to do something. But then when it's my thing, I don't know what to do. But you really have to have some design rules, okay? Like, for instance, if you were designing furniture in your house, you pretty much know that you can't put the um, um, a chair right in front of the front door, right? So when people open the door, the first thing they do is they can't get past the path. And there's this they, big yeah, armchair. They, they trip over that they chair. They don't, you don't put a oh, big like armchair Like the Dick Van Dyke. Remember the Dick Van Dyke opening show? Remember that? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, sort of. Oh, man. You're yeah, kidding. And he was tripping over the chair. Well, anyway, you don't do that, okay, in, in your house. I like but that if, show. But you think about it. If you if you think about this, follow me for a minute now. I know where else you're going to go. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. When you go into a painting, if you live in the western part of the world that um, you know reads from left to right, your front door basically is the left-hand corner of your painting. John, can you scoot down here on the... I can't. Give me a half a second here. I'll you. show you what I'm talking about. This is kind of key. So th this is good. I wasn't sure what I was going to teach about drawing today, but we're going to just do that five-minute drawing lesson, and this is going to be it. Do you guys like it? It's just going to be kind of a design well, we, we, we love the colors you got sitting there. Like, aren't these nice? They're great. Hey, aren't we'd like to thank pretty? Sharon once again for those. Sharon Puff, right. And for, fun those, for those uh, that she got at Michael's for my birthday, which was the February 1st, which was super So make, make, make a note, people. That for next year, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Gifts are welcome. I'm yeah, kidding. Cards and <laughs> gifts. <laughs> cards and gifts. Just keep them rolling in. Keep All them right. rolling. So here's the deal. Um, chalkboard. You've got, a, you've got chalkboard. All right. So remember, <laughs> I told you, so here's our, our, our picture. Okay. This is our picture. Now, your eye. Oh, good eye. Is going. The eyeball comes in through this direction. So just like you wouldn't take an easy chair and stick it a few feet from the front door, so when someone came in, the first thing they did was bump their self into an easy chair. You wouldn't pick it, put a big rock right here. That would stop them. Because that stops the eye from going in. Okay? And the other thing is, just like in your house, for instance, if you've got a, you know, a front door and, and the back door is open, you don't leave the house with the back door open. Okay? I mean, most people don't. You know, you close the door. Well... In your picture, you need to close the door. So your eye's going doop-de-doop-de-doop-de-doop-de-doop-de-doop-de-doop. And what's it going to keep it from 
just going on out. Well, then you have something called a stop, like a stop sign. Okay, so so you, Jen, sometimes it could be a building, sometimes it could be a cliff, sometimes it could be some sort of tree. All right, just like that. But that's your stop. And then the other thing is you don't have a big line doing that because that takes your eye goes up the tree and then out that line. So you're going, oh, that's kind of cool, right? So this is sort of basic design. It's not the most comprehensive design. Something came up today, and I'll show it to you, because um, it came up today, and I can remember it today. If I try to remember it tomorrow, I might not have it to show you. That will totally have gone. So, but this is coming to mind now, one subject. Now we've got a long canvas like this, and I had a lady send me today a design for a longer canvas. I think she said it was going to be 10 by 20, okay? So then she had a, a jug, some sort of a mug like that, and a book here like that and then she had um, I guess there was a pipe here or something like this some sort of a man's pipe and then over here she had a stack of books like that okay and um, then she had a little candle thing here okay like that some sort of little flaming candle that was right here well the thing of it is is that um, you wouldn't want the center of interest is really this mug and you don't want that smack dab in the center of your canvas. So if you're trying to design something and you're going to say, first off, when you say, what is the, what do we mean by center of interest? Well, just like a story, all right, just exactly like a story where you have a leading character and maybe some, uh, you know, if, if it was a movie, it would be your main actor and your supporting actors and so forth and your cast. You've got to think of that. So you, you, you want to decide if you're painting a bunch of stuff. What is the main thing you're talking about? Is it wall? Because otherwise it's just wallpaper. It's just if you've got something here and 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 nothing is lighter, darker than anything else, what you've created is sort of wallpaper, which is not your intention. So um, they always tell you if you want to become a good author, it doesn't hurt to have read a few books because there's sort of that, there's actually, even in writing, there's sort of a formula for this. Sort of, in fact, they can get it down pretty much plot wise. Um, so if you think about a tic-tac-toe board like this, like that, um, any of these areas are good places to have your center of interest. I mean, the thing you want to talk about, generally speak, you know, and you know, but not dead smack in the center. They can kind of creep over in something like this or something like that. So if I were going to do that one with the books, I got to thinking about that, you know, I got that. Maybe I'd still have my mug here off to the side and maybe a pipe, and then maybe a stack of books like this, like that. And maybe I'd have another book off of there like that. Maybe I'd have some here. Maybe here act as a stop on this side. Maybe another book kind of going this way. See, like that. All right, something like that. So your eye still is coming in here and coming to the mug, to the pipe. And then you probably want to stop over here, some sort of some book that was a little taller than this one that would act as a stop. The handle could could be sort of considered that. But anyway, that's the kind of that's the kind of thing we're talking about when you're when you're looking at designing a painting. So isn't that that's our drawing lesson for today. I hope that was helpful. That's commonly referred to in photography as the rule of thirds. Okay, a rule of thirds. All right, so that's kind of nice. The other thing too is if you're talking about a landscape, right, you've got you've got your horizon line is the is the viewers it's where the viewer is standing at eye level to the viewer. So if you have it up here, uh, Van Gogh liked all his horizon lines up here. That's where the sky uh, meets the dirt. He loved all that, all the and stuff. Some people, oh, you know, put dirt. it lower like this. Maybe this would be a beach scene here, and then this is all, all sky. You know what I mean? This is water. I mean, people do that. But generally speaking, you don't want your horizon line dead center. So it can happen. But generally speaking, you don't want to just divide your painting into half because you have something called except in still lifes in a landscape. You have something called the background, the fore, you know, the middle ground, and the foreground. And generally speaking, you're gonna your center of interest is going to be um, probably in this area here, or here, something kind of a cross between foreground and middle ground. So you, you don't want a lot of detail. But I, I don't want to get too much into that right now. But it, that's you're kind of dividing your picture into three parts, and you said like the rule of thirds, trying not to get that too 
um, carried away. I was going to show you how to draw this mouse, but we did something else. This is a, this is just a cute little mouse. This is a lesson. One of our first lessons we did over at gingercooklive.gallery uh, in our academy. This is one of our wonderful little lessons. I don't know how many people love my, mice, but um, I always thought this was cute, and it's certainly a good lesson on an animal fur. I like to kind of show you guys, you know, some of the stuff that you may not remember. We are organizing our Pinterest boards much more carefully now so that if you're a member of our academy, if you run over to Pinterest, in fact, I've got a new video we'll be releasing tomorrow. No, we've already released it. Not tomorrow, sorry. Um, that's another thing we're releasing tomorrow. We already we released this Pinterest lesson. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I'm gonna, uh, we've posted it in the academy. We've posted it on Facebook and on Sammy's uh, uh, Tech Bears channel, okay? So that's what we're... Um, and and the reason it, she's telling you all that is because we do not have a reference photo yet because it hasn't been created. Yeah, so, well, I don't have a reference photo for it. You know, and here's the thing about our Pinterest. The Pinterest, it's a 15-minute, maybe 10, 15-minute video of me telling you how that you can find all our lessons, whether there are the YouTube lessons or whether there are our Academy lessons. They're all on Pinterest boards. really easy to find. You can find, see what our students are doing. And I'm going to show you how to access those and then find them in the library or on, on YouTube. So that is a great 15-minute thing to watch. All right, so I'm going to say this was the sort of, this is my inspiration, and, but I want to change it. So I'm going to say my horizon lines back up here somewhere. And I want a, I'm going to say I've got some sort of um, hill here. And I'm going to have a little trail that's coming this way. That's not that different. And I'm going to have a hill coming here. And uh, maybe I'm going to have my trail do this. Let's see. Something like that. Okay. Kind of winding around. Okay. You like that? Yeah, I'm doing that. And you're going, I don't know, Ginger. It's your picture. I guess it's okay. And then I'm going to say that here I'm going to have some... Um, uh, uh, some back, some back mountains that maybe are coming. Ooh, big mountains. And then I'm gonna say my okay. And this is gonna be a lake. You like that? Little, this is gonna be water. That's gonna be sky. This is gonna be flowers, flowers trail, and we'll throw some trees in. We think so far. Bada okay? bing, bada boom. All right, that's 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 kind of based off this, but slightly different. So. We're going to go ahead and you're going, this is a little 8 by 10 and any old canvas background, light blue would have been better. I happen to have purple, so that's what we use. If we're nothing, we're green, you know. I mean, it's a purple canvas, but we're being green in that we're recycling stuff. So, uh, painted a purple canvas. And, that yeah, you can with... buy whole, I mean, you can take a whole university course just on designing paintings. I mean, I'm not going to give it to you in five minutes, but just certain things that are sort of helpful to know. See, this is titanium. I want to put a big thing of titanium white here. And um, cad red medium. It's always a good color to have. And let's see what else have we got. Pretty um, much your standard palette. Yeah, pretty much everything we're doing. We're going to do some magenta because we've got... Um, uh, flowers. Flowers, which is a good reason to do magenta. I can't think of a you know, good, 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 good reason. This is... Um, the magenta right here. Now that background this is, is um, ultramarine blue and purple. This is Design Magenta from Matisse, and we understand you guys can't get that, but you can take regular quadrochrome magenta. You ready for this? You can take this magenta and add a little red to that, and you get almost this Design Magenta. Nap oh, naphthal, red. Naphthal crimson. A regular, you know, a, prim a primary red to that, and you'll get that. And not your CAD red. Not your CAD red, but nap like a primary red, like this red. Here we go. I'll give it to you, like this red here, like that. See that red? That's your primary red, or your and Matisse calls it naphthal crimson, but it's basically your your the red that's a it's your pure red, red. Un, unchanged red. Unchanged red. Oh like yeah. It. So let's see. We were looking for that. <laughs> Yellow oxide, I believe. Yellow oxide. There we go. So or yellow just, orchid. And then we've still got the blues to put out. Well, that doesn't that. look like yellow. Wow, it sure wasn't, wasn't it? What a surprise. Well, you know, this is, um, 
This is what happens when you don't read the labels. There was a little <laughs> yellow oxide on it. You see? Oh, very. Look how much is on there versus the red. Hello. <laughs> what are you looking at over there? Well, not not much. Just myself in the mirror. I'm just <laughs> there. I am. I just can't how focus fair, anymore. How fair am I today? <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. There we go. That's the color we know. Just um, yellow oxide. Yellow oxide. Now let's see. Um, so you got the Blue Brothers to go. Yeah, I've got the Blues Brothers to go, and we're shot, and we're off and, and off and running, uh, as opposed to walking. We're off and running, you guys. This will be fun. I think it's nice to start, already show you how to do it. Someone will say, what's the measurements on an 8 by 10 It's four fingers here. <laughs> I don't know, two fingers here. Yeah. Look like two and a half Eight fingers. Eight fingers here. Do you like it? <laughs> I don't know. And we figured her fingers a half inch. Here we go. Listen, this is like... Um, Seven fingers, I like that. <laughs> well, yeah, you're spreading your fingers apart. I think I was closer to eight. Well, maybe it was eight. <laughs> don't know. But then again, does it really matter? No, it's just, you know, just generally, it's that my hill's a little different than you. They had an earthquake and it changed, right? Just, <laughs> that's just, it Things move like around on Earth all the time. Something happened and it just, there was a volcano and then, gosh, all bets are off, right? All bets are off. Whatever that expression came from. Yeah, I'll put myself up. In you know, corner. when I was uh, before I was um, born, my uh, my real mother was a world class psychic, and I don't think like first class cars or something. I mean, she was a world famous psychic. She did readings for the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, Albert Einstein, uh, President Roosevelt, Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, she was the inspiration for the Nancy Drew novels. She used to help the police find uh, uh, criminals in Kansas. In Kansas? Uh huh. How cool is that? She was from uh, Atchison, Kansas. That's cool. And um, she lived at the same time as Amelia Earhart, and they uh. lived in the same town. I don't know if they knew each other or not, but they certainly lived in the same circles. Now, my mother was not, she didn't, uh, her family was not wealthy. They were, um, I think my dad, they had a farm, and he was, uh, he did upholstery for trains, you know, railroads and stuff. So oh, they were not, they were not wealthy that's, that's people. That's a good job. But, um, uh, but, she, but she started, you know, working as a psychic, a full-time psychic, you know, about the age of 15. That's cool. So where was I going with this? I'm not really sure. It was a nice story. It was a good story, but I had a, I was telling you something before I got lost down memory lane about um, something. What was that now? Well, you can tell I'm not psychic because I can't even remember <laughs> what I was going to tell you about it. Oh, yeah. So all bets are off. Yeah. So she used to go down the racetrack and just pick the winners for my uh, dad. Just check, 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 check. And finally it got to the point where he was told not to come back. That's not very nice because he's lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do sort of a, uh, let's take a little, mag a little magenta into that blue. Kind of make a little bit of a purple sky and a little bit more white to it. What do you think? That's kind of pretty. Yeah, kind of a periwinkle idea. blue. I'm doing it over something dark. This is just a little um, number uh, eight bright brush. This is one of the Brist this is not a Bristol one. This is one of the Cambridge. This came in one of Cinnamon's the Art Sherpa's kits. Okay, I'm just gonna lay in some paint here. Now my brush is damp, but it's not you don't see me dipping into water to spread the paint. If I want paint to happen, I'm getting more paint. So I know that there's paint in the brush. Let me show you what happens if you use water. Okay, you dip it in water and then you do this. And then you see how thin this just got? This just got real thin. You just don't want to do that. So you It'll just take keep... you two or three coats to cover it back up again. Yeah, see, so it just it's, it's like just, you're it's... using your student grade paints. Yeah, yeah. So it's just you know, there's a reason why we picked this paint. So let's let's use this. Um, so let's see a little bit more blue here. There we go. There we go. Here we go. So I'm gonna just say, there's my um, sky. Now I'm not gonna leave it like that. But this is layer one of sky, kind of down and across. Down and across, down and across. Now I think I want some sort of water. I want it more turquoisey in the water. So I'm going to add some white to that mixture. More white. Now this is so dark, I'm going to come over here and lighten it up here. I'm going to come this way. I'm going to come around here. Now notice the brush strokes are deliberately sideways. If you're going to make them down, then just smooth them back out. So we're going to say, here's our lake and I'm going to bring the water up here like this and zigzag this around. Water water seeks its own level. Did your did your mother ever say that to you, John, when she talked about your um, friends what? in disparaging ways? What, what, what was it she said? Water seeks its own level. 
Yes. Yes. It's yes, implying it that, um, you know, you could hang out with those people, but um, no, so it's those people, but, um, you know, what does that say about you kind of thing? I'm going to bring a little of this color now back up into the sky. That's pretty. Right over what we just painted. Kind of the lake color. Now, I'm going to take some white here, right like this, flat on my brush. Look how I'm holding it. It's just kind of a different way to make clouds. You ready for this? Now, I'm just going to come up here like this and just. Yeah, everything's it's totally wet. wet there, right? Everything's totally wet. And I'm just very gently, barely touching this, shoving some of this white up here like that, a little bit of white just on the brush like that. Just moving it around. Here's some clouds. Isn't that pretty? Little, just soft little clouds in the sky. Nothing too, nothing too... Uh, nothing too fancy because uh, honestly we've got um, now let's take some of this white and do that on the water pinch the brush and then just do things sideways do a little reflection of the water pinch that don't want that much white just gonna mop some up okay let's put a little bit around here like that nothing is ever quite the same color a little bit of dark color in our water here too maybe where our cliffs are let me just come down here into the water like that. There we go. There. All right. And make sure this stays nice and level. Back there. Let's see. Oh, a little more white here. Kind of got carried away with that. Here we go. It's not. It's not. It's. It's a lake, so I don't want. I'm not trying to make. Um. You know, waves. Just some highlights on the water like that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Now, while that's drying, see, isn't that working out pretty good? While that's drying, to rinse the brush. Now we're rinsing here, and I'm touching the bottom of the container, really rinsing it, wiping it on this. Um, a, so I'm finding a clean place on here. Rinse it again if I still have color. Now, I want to say that there's some, um, we're going to have some azaleas and flowers on both sides of the walk. The walk's going to be light. Let's take a little bit of white and yellow, yellow oxide, okay? And let's just come over the, uh, this is so dark, our little purple path here, that it's going to affect my um, path anyway. I'm going to come up here like this and suggest this came this way. Kind of zigzag that around. And that is our path. Now that's just the first color on it. We'll certainly do some others, but we've got, we've got something going here now. For those of you just coming in, this is an 8x10 canvas with a ultramarine blue and purple background as your underpainting. Okay, so now I want a, a, some sort of purple uh, mountain, so I'm going to put some purple in that. And maybe a little bit of magenta. That's pretty. And how about a little ultramarine blue? Okay, and I want to come back up here like this. And I'm going to say that here's some purple mountains and bring my down into the water here this is just again first coat on these got a little bit into my clouds which I didn't want to do but that's okay I'm gonna come down in here like that just sort of I'm just laying in our coastline do you like that coastline uh, a little bit darker the purple I'm come down here like that say so here's our coastline there, all right. So let, laid those in. Rinse the brush. Now, what? Well, we're going to say this is a hill doing that, and this is a hill doing that. So we need um, some blue and a tiny bit of yellow. A little phthalo blue. So both blues, a little yellow. Let's make a dark green. And what we're going to say here, so where all this purple is, at this point, I'm going to put some more blue with that. I just want this a dark green, okay, like that. You're just blocking everything just in blocking right now. blocking it in like that because I know I want that green, and I don't want this green, okay? So far, so good. And it's against something dark, and someone's going to, and I'm going to put right here, I'm going to put another little hill here by our path to kind of, um, you know, keep you from falling in the lake, right? We're going to be up on a cliff looking down. don't want you to think we could. you could fall into my lake here and I'm going to get that path really thin too. See? That would be an owie. Yeah, so now 
So that brush is just doing all it's going to do. Let's change and get one of these little bright brushes out. What's this one? This is a three, three eighths. What is that? Put my glasses on. Three eighths. Yeah, so it, it looks like a three eighths from over here, but again, I'm 20 feet away. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to get a little yellow oxide, right? And um, I think I'm just going to stab it on here like this. Just into this wet paint. I'm just stabbing this in here like that. And I'm just, just tapping it in here. Oh, okay, like that. Is that not like those sound effects? You know, I wish we could have music or something when we were painting these things. It would be sort of fun. And let's do the same thing on the other side here, too. Well, only if Eric would uh, write us up like a two hour something, you know, non something that's in the public domain that we could have playing. Yeah, that would be nice. I think that's kind of nice. All right, so I'm sorry. Now again, I'm not talking too much about this. I might put a little bit of blue and purple back into this to just get, give a little contrast. I'm going to say that's the, this is so far back that we don't have a lot of detail in this, whatever this is going, whatever is growing back here, we don't have a lot of detail. But what we are going to have is a lot of detail up front. So you're going to go, go yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's get a little white into some green here like that. And... Uh, Pinch the brush, kind of reshape it. We use our brush as a, um, it's all wet here now. Just going to say, here's some, here's some stuff growing this way, like that. Maybe here like that. Now you'll notice that when you see me make a couple of marks and nothing's happening, I'm going to just, get, just more say, paint. get more paint. I'm just going to say, here I've got some stuff growing down and along here that, um, Use a little lighter green, nothing's happening, a little more paint, like that. And I'm just tapping it in here, like this. Okay? So far so good. Now the same thing here. Let's um let's take um let's just do something like this now. Let's just say that there's some lighter green coming down here. Like this. Coming down here toward the path. Just kind of through the light green like that. I can kind of do this. There's a few little colors that we're playing with, okay? So already it's sort of sort of taking shape, don't you think? Sort of taking shape, and we haven't done all that much, okay? Um, I might come here now. I've had a chance to look at my water, and um, I might come in here with a little bit of, this is, had a chance to dry now, just a few little bits, a little bit of water on the brush, a little bit of blue. People always say, when, do you, when might you do water? When you want the paint really thin. So I've got a little bit of water. My brush is slightly damp, and I might just come on here like that. Just add a few little streaks here. Nothing's happening. You see that? I'm making. I am actually painting something, and nothing is happening. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I've got a question here for you. Carolyn's asking about the student grade paints. Are they good enough to do your lessons? You can use up pretty much anything to do it. You're going to have the most results with them. Um, the best results you'll get with regular um, acrylics. If people start off with student grade, they don't know, so they're just going to buy something, right? And um, but typically, they're going to end up putting on more more layers. Yeah, you're going to put more layers on. It's going to take you longer. You're going to wonder why your colors don't look as bright. <clears throat> you're going to feel like somehow you have failed. And it's not you. It's your it's your paint. Okay. So in the long run, if you can't afford at the moment, everybody's got a budget. We understand that. If you can't afford that. Um, what you want to do is, um, I'm getting a little orange here, what you want to do is buy the white in the in the professional paint. Buy white, and maybe the next color would be yellow and maybe cad red medium. Try to get the better colors in it. Um, I want to put, let's put a, make this a little sandier. I'm going to add a little purple to that, kind of brown this out a little bit. I think it needs to be orange or two. There we go. I'm going to start putting this on the, on our, half those the brush strokes are going back and forth like this and then we're gonna not make it too perfect see like that there we go all right so it's just already our path is is looking a little better okay now one thing we can do and i didn't do it yet but i will do it is one thing that's kind of nice is if you have some sort of a, a coastline a light a bit of a water around the coastline can be very effective. 
like that. Just um, you're not outlining kind of the, the waves just crashing up on the rocks. Well, you know, or maybe it's the you know whatever it's the beach or something, but they can be effective, right? If you do that, something like that, it can look pretty good. Something out here like that. There you go. So it just gives it a little bit more a depth, you know, if you're doing that. Okay. Again, you don't have to do it too much. You don't have to be a big outline. And I kind of like the darker color in here underneath this for the um we started with that just kind of underneath here where the mountains might you know be reflecting in the water i think that's kind of pretty too don't want to get it down too far because i want a little bit of light there between that and the and the um dirt now what i'm going to do here is um let's see i think i didn't put it out yet but we're going to get some burnt umber i'll just put that over here that's your dark brown and I think we're going to put two trees up this way. We're going to come up this way and let's see if that'll, we haven't dried anything yet, so it's a little tricky. And um, let me just do, I'm not dried a thing. So let's say trees are generally fatter at the bottom. This is all pretty tacky to be trying to do trees. So let's try another one here like that. Put a little purple with it. Get this darker. I'm going to turn my canvas sideways. Now I'm going to just start bringing my brush this way. See, I kind of know where the tree has to go, so I'm going to just pull the brush like that. And I want the trunk to be wider. And sometimes that's a little easier. And let's see, let's just let's bring something up like this. And some little, you know, some branches coming out like this. We'll just bring that up to the top. And uh, let's bring another one here coming up like this let's just divide that here and there and the angle brush is so perfect because you can you can do that and these are kind of touched at the bottom now we've got um already you see that gave us some distance okay and i think we're going to do another tree in here like this And uh, there's a nice big tree here. And say, let's see, we're kind of going to put a tree here and bring it all the way off the canvas, too, like that. And then maybe have it fork like that a couple of places. And I think I'm going to just mist. Everything seems very dried out. Particularly that brown is very dried out. It's very thick and drying out. Not flowy at all. Very disappointing. That dark brown. That happens. Okay, so let's make this tree a little bit thicker right here. It's coming into there like that. So we've got that little seam. Okay. So now what? Well, at some point we've got to dry something, you know, don't you? You know, just uh, incidentally, um, John, did you get all the, the packages mailed out for the winners of the last um, uh, drawing? Yes, Ginger, all drawing paintings have been shipped. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's interesting. You know, so when when do you think people should expect to have gotten their stuff? I Let's would have hoped by classes. now or next couple of days. Okay. Very, very shortly. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of white Should here be this class. week sometime. Just going to kind of give it a little... There we go. Uh, Barb's asking a question about the trees that are leading off the canvas. Is, is that a good practice where you're leading the eye off the canvas? What, like when you're going up yeah. like this? Yeah, well, yeah that's fine. You want to carry them all the way up. It's still it's acting as a stop. And then we're going to bring some leaves and stuff this way over the top. Okay? So you're going to be forcing the eye back into the picture. Yeah, but you, th that would still be fine. Like even in this this picture here, see, you've got the tree. You want the, you want the trees, uh, you know, to leave, you know, so... All right, so oh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try it. this way, sideways, and mm -hmm. take a little bit of yellow oxide and white, and I'm going to come like this. I'm going to pinch the brush and reshape it. This is so white. I feel like I. I mean, this is so dark, John, or wet. I feel like I have to. Um, have to give that a dry. I'm not sure that I don't have to dry it. Or I'm going to have to paint something else. If you find you're trying to do something and it's going muddy on you because the paint's still wet, then just stop and dry it. Don't keep don't keep forcing it. That wasn't that wasn't highlighting for me. So what I'll just do is paint something else. I'm just going to move around the canvas and paint something else. I'm going to sit there and say, well, 
I'm going to have a little brown here with the orange like that. Maybe I'll make a little reddish brown color and maybe I'll just come up here like this and, and add a darker, some dark brown. Maybe I'll add a little darker bank here to my uh, stuff and maybe I'm going to say that I've got some, maybe that it's got a shadow of these trees kind of going this way across the path. What do you think? Something like that. And you say that these trees, and again, that's pretty wet right here, what I just did here. So that may not work too well either. If it's still wet, if it's too wet, if you're having trouble and it's too, it's still wet, then you've either got, you got to either move somewhere else or dry it. So let's just lighten this up here. Okay, lighten this up. Okay, like this. All right, so we've got kind of a dirty little path going here, and it's still too dark but we will lighten it up in a few places when we can. But again, it's not dry yet. This is what happens, everybody. It's, see, that's well, dry. Sure, it's sure better than uh, oil. Yeah. So, yeah, my, you know, we talked about my mom, you know, the, the answer to that question about my mother. Yeah, she did, um, she was, uh, had a manager, and then she, she traveled all over the United States and in France and um, Europe and stuff. And um, like I say, she just... Um, she died in 1947, you know, which was sort of, uh, she died in, uh, you know, just, just um, about um, the year after my father died. Let's see if I can bring another leaf up. See, I'm smearing oh, paint. You see that? Yeah, I saw that cloud yeah, being you taken that? off. <laughs> just, 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 well, I'm just saying that that's what happens. Let's just wipe that off here. And do you panic over it? No. No, you don't. But I mean, look, my hands. I got a new have a clean towel now, because that was unlucky, and I need to clean my hands because I've got paint all over. So how come my happy little tub of towels? Honestly, <laughs> I do not get paid to tell you this, but they work so well. I am happy to share. I'll tell you anything that works really good. We we'll always are happy to share good stuff. Yeah, with we'll you. even share things that we don't like. Yeah, and really, we'll tell you what we don't like and who we don't like. <laughs> We're just, somebody, you know, that's the fun thing about having a YouTube channel is that um, with no you know, sponsors, we can just sit there and say, you know, with no sponsor, we can sit there and say, you know, we got the worst treatment from so and so. Um, just uh, just sharing our experience wouldn't want to influence you on your decisions, but this is what happens, stuff like that, you know. And I, well, who doesn't read reviews on Amazon? I'm sitting there That's happily the going to buy do. things, and then I'm looking down to the one reviews. Now, there's some malcontents down there that would, you know, even in our fabulous show, there's people that give us a thumbs down. Why, I couldn't imagine, but they do. All right. But, you know, you, when you read the reviews and um, on a product and, and people say, you know, it broke it. Well, example, we were looking at suitcases. We were. We were. We needed a, one of those nifty double-wheel rolly suitcases. And um, we were looking at those, and it was uh, President's Day, so it was going to be on sale. And so we were looking on the Internet first, on Amazon, which is our first choice to go look for things. And <laughs> It's we, our go-to store. And then we found, I've got to dry this, but i got to say, share this first. So then we found um, some really good priced ones, and then people said, well, they, they just cracked and fell apart at the airport. Just wheels fell off, horrible things happened. Well, who wants that junk, you know? So that's the kind of thing. People ask me about... Um, a student paint, and I'm not equivocating it totally to cracked luggage, but um, you're better off to buy the, <laughs> the, the good better stuff. stuff. The better stuff. Let me dry this, okay? And then I'm, we'll carry, I'm going to carry mute on. you. I'm muting you. All right. All right. Well, she's doing that. Uh, I see a couple people are asking about our Facebook group. And let me put that link up for you folks down there. There you go. This is our private Facebook group. Uh, we're going to close the doors to general public when we reach 4,000, and we're getting close to it. Um, I'm thinking last check was around six, 700 to go. And then what that means is if you are in there, you can stay. As long as you behave yourself, you're, you're good to go. But then the only other way to get into it will be people that are members of our academy, gingercooklive.gallery. They will be asked to apply if they'd like to. This is kind of an extension. It's a private club. No nastiness goes on in there. Everybody is pleasant and cooperative. We have March Madness going. I see a couple questions going by about the palette knife. Ginger, a couple people want to do that challenge. We have like 350 people wanting to do that March Madness challenge. 
and the pallet knife, and they're thinking, I'll just go get some plastic pallet knives. Do you have an oh, opinion? Oh, yeah, gosh, no. The, you, you, the worst thing <laughs> you could you do is try I told you she'd have an to, opinion. <laughs> the worst thing you could do is try to do a pallet knife painting with a crummy plastic pallet knife. They're for stirring things. You might as well, you know, use your fingers. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. Actually, we've done some great finger painting videos. Um, yeah, no, you want to use metal pallet knives. And, and, and Did you have that one that you do? You, remember the woody? Can you bring up the woody picture? Um, yeah, we've got the woody picture here. And then do you have that pallet knife handy that you use with that? That was the um, let's see if we got Ross. The, let's see woody picture here. Yeah, this is um. Don't don't worry about the camera. Uh, why would hammer. I worry about your camera? <laughs> here, this is a painting that we have on our um, on the website. website. And this is a this was released in the week of the uh, February about twenty second, I think, somewhere in there <laughs> or somewhere in there that week. And it, you paint it first, and then you come back and touch the whole thing up with the palette knife, all right? And that was a really, really cool uh, palette knife painting. And that was um, a cool palette knife, that, that, you know, that, and when and I was also, editing that. You know, there's so many different ways to paint things. You see how we're kind of painting this in this style of this. And, you know, there's this is a, a lesson that we taught on, on, on our website. This is my uh, granddaughter, Luna, and our, her dog, Trix. And that's a different way to paint something. You know, there's a lot of different styles of painting, and I can't say that enough because, for instance, like um, a, the, a recent lesson we had on on uh, YouTube was this one. This is very out of focus, sort of soft, uh, very loose painting of a rose garden. Okay, it's, uh, it's going to be similar to this, but not quite. This going to be this will be a little what we call tighter, more detailed than this one. Um, here's another one that was just recent. If you haven't seen this one yet, if you haven't done this one, I love our um, our wagon wheels with the flowers. I think that's really pretty. This could be lovely big. It's just not saying too much. Um, what could you, could you put, you, maybe you want to put a little bird here. Might be cute, right? A little bird up here, right there on the wagon wheel, kind of looking down. Might be fun. Um, again, your imagination is everything, but I can show you some techniques on how to get these effects. You can see this style of painting is completely different than this. The same thing with our grapefruits, which I, I love, kind of abstract grapefruits. That's another YouTube painting. If you haven't done that, this is a good one. Then on our website recently, we just posted this painting of uh, this uh, older couple sitting on a park bench selling flowers. Now, this style is different than that. It's similar, but it's different. So rather than worry about whether you can do exactly one style or the other, what you're trying to find is your style, okay? That's the key. If I show you enough different ways to paint something, um, you're going to find your style pretty well, and that's what we're looking for. All right, so let's uh, let's try to highlight our trees again. They're dry. Let's take a little bit of white and yellow oxide. Come along, tilt it like this. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we forgot to ask you at the beginning, um, and I would certainly in invite you to do so now. Why are you jumping around? Okay. Sure, could it be all the paint that's underneath? Underneath, yeah. Okay. Like that. And I'm just going to come on up here like this. Hey, to help our channel grow, if you subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. Hit the little bell. That will send alarms when we do live lessons. Oh, Sometimes and listen, we do and them in speaking of bells, I want to thank the people that have gone to our um, our uh, our website. And, and rang the bell. Done, and, and have done the donation for the, our uh, um, the donation bus. You know, help a scholarship, uh, other, um, other uh, folks into other, it. other folks that might need it, and you know, kind of, we have sort of. If you guys feel like a, um, doing something like that, uh, how do they do that, John? Just go to the website gingercooklive.gallery, and over on the right hand side, you'll see a place that says donations. Uh, it should be the Karen Little Scholarship donation. And who was Karen, John? That would be my late wife. Yeah, and Karen was always the kind of person that not only everybody loved her, but then John and she were married for like 40 years, but 40, right? Yeah. So, but she was the kind of person that would do things and just give them away. That was her whole nature. It was never about keeping things. She was about giving things away. She'd oh, she would knit forever. Like we'd go to the high school concerts when Charlie was in band and she'd be sitting there knitting somebody to walk by. Oh, that's such a pretty scarf. She goes, you want it? And she'd give it to him. It's a big like that. I mean, she's an extremely generous person. And I think that there couldn't be something even, you know, to have someone, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, have a scholarship fund in Karen's name, we thought was, she died unexpectedly. I knew her. Um, lovely person. Of course, um, you wouldn't expect anybody but a lovely person to be married to John, right? Because he's so lovely. I've got to tell you that. Oh, stop. 
But, um, you know, but I say that because, um, uh, um, you, you know, people say, well, what can I do? You know, how can I, you know, show appreciation for what you guys do? And um, we appreciate you. What, you know, we appreciate you and the fact that one, a couple of things you can do is that you can sh share these playlists. Well, you know, start a playlist, share these videos with people, tell people about us. Um, YouTube recognizes, uh, sadly, it's sort of almost like voting when you, you know, some, the more subscribers somebody has, the more likely your, um, your videos are going to get out to the public. The more you share them, the more likely they are to get out to the public. And of course, we, we would like people to know about us. I think what we're doing is a little bit different than the other artists that, that are also doing a wonderful service on YouTube. Um, but I think what we're a little bit different than them. And um, let's see, we're going to come back over here now and lighten this tree. We put it in there, but it wasn't as light as it could be. It's a little bit dark here for value. So we're going to come up this way and lighten this tree just a bit like that. Okay, so there's that tree and the same thing you know, here. And also now with your, you know, everybody has to have a YouTube account. And in your account, you keep track of the videos you like to watch. You create your own playlist. So you can go to a video like one of ours and just say, add that to my playlist. And you can create your own little playlist. And YouTube looks at that information and goes, well, this person's being shared all over the place, and the playlists are all over the place. It does us good. Yeah. You know, we appreciate anything and everything. So see how we're ju we're just lightening the lightening the path here. See, acrylics have a tendency to dry a little dark, so I'm coming along here now and light. You know, giving the path a little bit of light here. Do all acrylics dry dark, and do some dry darker than others? Oh, I mean, they all dry dark, question? and I, I think, you know, that I really couldn't tell you, John. I don't know. I wouldn't know they, you. I just have no idea. You'd have to sit there and play with all the different you, ones and, and see and what see, it does. And see, and then I think it's probably brand to brand. Uh, Golden claims that theirs changed the least, and there's some fancy, super expensive Japanese company that's got some hooper duper acrylics that are just Twilight Zone money, but are very nice. <laughs> you know, who, who wouldn't want those? But they claim theirs hardly changed color at all. It just depends. Um um, you know, for instance, there's a company in Europe called Old Holland, and um, somebody asked me the other day about them, and they used to sell those at Jerry's. And Old Holland, let's see, what the advantage of acrylics is they dry very quickly, and oil paints, are, you know, don't. So a lot of our, our oil painting artists will do like 90% of their painting in acrylics, and then do the top part with with oils. And what happened, which you can do, you can't do acrylics on oils, but you can do oils on acrylics. And so what Old Holland did, okay, was uh, which was sort of clever. What they did was they they created a whole line of acrylics. It took them years that exactly matched their oil paints. Wow! Exactly matched it, so that um, you know you if you had a it. color in one, you have a color in another. And that took this is a little mixing white. I don't have much left, but I think I can get a little of this out. Okay, here's a little bit of mixing white, which is your transparent white. Now I want to come over the top of these mountains here see what i'm doing pushing them back pushing them back this is called atmospheric perspective and we're just you want to make sure that you if you do it just pure white you're, you're just it's going to be too much but you can come back over the mountains like this and just push them into the sky a little bit to just give that a little bit of atmosphere you can say that there's some clouds maybe coming up in between you know sometimes there'll be a um some some mist coming up between valleys or something like that but anyway there's our um that's our kind of that we're doing that and also if you needed to you know lighten some clouds back here you can mixing white will do it will still give you that translucent just painted it on what paint feel but um so we kind of lighten some clouds back there so i'm going to take that as we're talking and do something like this and kind of put a little more white around this peninsula that's kind of pretty. Okay. All right. So cool. And then we've got, um, so let's, let's, um, let's start with some trees and, and leaves. Let's start with that. Let's get a dark green going. Cause that's the first color we would want to use in making leaves. And I want to come down here. Let's see, using my angle brush. Let's see the long end, the short end toward me. I'm going to come in here like this. And I'm going to start with some leaves coming down here like this and across the tree. And usually you just see these bare, but we're, um, I always like to put the skeleton of the tree in regardless of how many 
leaves I'm going to put on it. I like to think of our friend Sylvia in um, uh, Australia, who was painting recently, sent me a painting for some art help, art critique, and um, she had gotten um, really carried away with her leaves. It was just almost kind of cute. She had so many leaves in this picture. And um, I'm going to bring it down here like that. And you want to have, birds should be able to fly through your trees. That's a little thing. And don't, don't go too crazy on me, right? That's all I'm saying is that try not to go too crazy on the leaves like that. We can still bring some down. It's a little blue. Pinch that off. Get back to the green. Okay. So now, and look, if I, if I got two nuts with the leaves, what could I do? I would just, um, here, we're going to lighten some up here now because the light's coming from the top here like that. I'm going to just put the lighter colors on the leaves. What you can do is uh, put your sky back, okay? Take a little phthalo blue and white, make some blue-green leaves. I kind of like those better than those gold ones here. So on the top of the, the under part of the leaves is the darker color, and the top of the leaves is the lighter color. And you want to bring some in front of your trees like that. You want some coming down here like this. Put some dark underneath. Remember, there might be a branch here, and how you're going to show it is that it's coming this way. So I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm doing yet, because I've um, got to lighten up these leaves a bit for you to be able to see these right down in here, like this. OK, so this is just sort of a, you know, I almost can feel the breeze in the sky, can't you, with the, let's bring the leaves out this way. OK, so there's our top of our tree here. Um, this painting, I think, would be really pretty big, John. You're not saying too much. Are you over there just kind of reading comments? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, just reading comments as we go flying well, by. Well, come on. Talk to me here. What do you got going here? Well, just the usual chit-chat going on. Or... I, I need to hear it because I can't, uh, you know, can't answer questions if I don't know what they are. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, we're going to just uh, suggest that there might be some... Um, different flowers that are growing up down here, just some grasses around here. It's a very kind of one cookie lesson painting. It's just not hard to do. I think you'd find that it would be very easy to do, really, when you start to paint it. You'd be surprised at how nice it is to be able to just turn around and, and have a good background. And let's see, let's get this a little darker here. Margaret's kind of asking a question about the absorbent ground. She saw you had a, uh, I think it was another lesson address the absorbent crown and she goes what is that absorbent ground was uh, invented by um uh, golden the golden paint company it's an american company up in new york state and what it does is if you brush it on leave it on brush it on comes it's kind of like a thin pancake batter maybe would be the consistency of it and you can kind of take a big brush and brush it on a canvas and what it does is it makes the canvas very absorbent like paper so it's sort of wick so you can get some nice effects and then when you don't want to have that happen anymore, okay, so when you don't want any more wicking effect, then what you can do is um, um, uh, seal it with a, like a little bit of matte varnish or something, and then it acts like regular canvas again. So you can do, particularly um, if you're a watercolorist and you want to get that watercolor effect with acrylics, absorbent ground would be just the thing, really, I would think would be just the thing to get. Let's just come back here like that. Okay, so, so I haven't put any flowers in yet. Just adding a few, you know, light leaves, that kind of thing. All right. Uh, Cheryl, so, Cheryl's asking, if you don't have mixing white, can you just take titanium white and just water it down? Uh, no, uh, really, you want to have mixing white or just, yeah, you, you really can't uh, because it just doesn't work that way. I think I want some of this gold up here like this on this grass behind these trees like that. I'm going to just put some gold here like that. Just kind of warm well, once that again, up. The, the famous question comes up. We don't see you using a lot of water. What's the story? Well, you know, John, we, we don't use water because it's we're doing an oil, you know, we're painting like oil painters, okay? And if you use a lot of water, then it all thins down. And, it, you know, it kind of comes up. It kind of reminds me of that story. You know, I don't know if I've told you guys this story or not, but years ago, okay, Cinnamon's dad and I, um, and Cinnamon, were all living on this little four-acre uh, ranch in California near San Diego. And uh, 
we had had uh, some people from our church come out and dig us a pond that was like, we named it Lake Cinnamon. It was a much bigger pond than we had any idea anybody <laughs> was going to make us, okay? I mean, it would, gosh, we were just shocked, okay? And, um, oh, Lord, we, we had no idea. So then we had to, we had natural uh, runoff in our in this area where we put the pond so that we could, um, see me doing the gold here, so we could... Um, uh, so we could fill it up, but then when it comes summer, right, then we were sort of screwed because we, uh, water was so expensive. Water was our most expensive thing in California. We had horses, and we're trying to water pasture and, uh, you know, to keep the grass kind of wet for that. And then to try and just, just dump water into a kind of a useless pond was, <laughs> we had an island in the middle. It was really pretty. And then we had another pond dug up above it that sort of caught the runoff first and then filtered it with a sp concrete spillway that went over it. And then it went down into the second pond with the concrete spillway. I mean, it was really elaborate uh, thing. So anyway, uh, next to us, about um, about two, you know, this was all a lot of acreage. You know, I don't know, about two blocks over, to you know, with no, nobody owned the property. Somebody owned the property, but nobody was built on it yet. I'm sure they have now, but nobody had built on it yet. Um, um, we had... Um, uh, there was this giant pipe about the size of uh, a car, really big pipe that was buried under the ground. It went clear from Escondido, went you know, like 50 miles away or something, and then well, and it w went through this other property through their hill. You could see, I don't know about, um, I don't know, 60, you know, I don't know how far, about two car lengths of it. You could see out of the ground, and then it got buried back into the ground again, and it ended up in Oceanside. And, and then there, it continued through the, this uh, water prop treatment plant in Oceanside and ended up at this, um, uh, I'm putting a little white flowers on here, you guys, just bear with me. It ended up at this, this um, after it went through this treatment plant, at t two miles out into the ocean, the pipe ended and the water was released. Now, this water had already been treated in Escondido, so it wasn't sewer water. It was just um, what they called gray water, okay? It was... Um, it was it, in a lot of municipalities like Phoenix and other, other states, you know, use that all the time for, um, you know, for watering. And over the years, we had gotten to be friends with one of the guys that kind of managed that pipe. Occasionally it would burst and we'd call them up and they'd come out and, and they had to get through our property to get to their pipe. They didn't have any access to it, and which was kind of nice. And so um, anyway, so what we did was we... Um, we were thinking about it and we thought, you know, if we could get some of that water out of that pipe, we could put it in our pond and um, we would yeah. pay this big water bill. So there was this sort of manhole cover. That's the one that used to blow all the time, the part of the pipe that was exposed. So Cinnamon's dad went to the salvage yard and he bought all kinds of PVC pipe. I mean, like... Tons of it. <laughs> tons of it. Like two, three blocks worth of it, right? And he buried most of it, and he got it up to that pipe, and then we only had to connect a little bit. It took us about 20 minutes to connect it on a weekend, and then we had a siphon, and, we, and the manhole cover had been slightly off, and we could put our pipe and siphon into the manhole cover because it was going to downhill to our pond. He'd start the siphon. Now, you're all shocked, right? And then we were swiping this water. You were uh, borrowing it. Well, we were recycling. It was still going yeah. to the pond. It's still going to the ocean. Just we just were diverting. <laughs> we were diverting it, right? <laughs> you, you, you're going to do it through the ocean and by we evaporation. We put it up into the upper pond so it would filter there and then filter back into our other pond. Our ducks loved it. Our ducks were so happy. Here's the magenta going on some of this for some magenta flowers, like in here, like that. We're just putting a few like this over the white. You know, over the whites right here. Okay, a few little flowers. You guys are happy with this now. Okay, and this is just your quadricone magenta. And uh, that's your brighter pink, okay? And I'm just going to say, here's some flowers along here. Happy days with the flowers, all right? Now, let's see. How about some over here? Maybe some back here like this, okay? Now I'm going to put some flowers in here. Let's start with the darker red. Let's take a little ultramarine blue, which I'm out of. And so anyway, so this all seemed like a great idea. And, you know, we did this. We got away with this. We do it every other weekend or something for a couple of years. We got away with this for a long time. We always had these beautiful ponds with no one could, <laughs> no one could understand how we could afford to keep them full, full, full of water. Well, that's how we could. And the ducks loved it. And everybody was living happily ever after. And then um, one sad day, our siphon, which was about this long, okay, 
maybe like that. About the about three feet long, and then it had a little hooky thing. It uh, the current because this water was rushing through there. I mean, if you fell in there, you'd be dead. You know, this water you got to understand it's this big pipe water's rushing through. Um, it it got away from us and it disappeared and it ended up miles away into the station of the. Um, um, here we're putting in these darker purple flowers in here like this back here. Um, back down there in, in, in Oceanside. Well, we got a call from this guy saying somebody uh, found a siphon. Um, <laughs> and the, the helicopters are coming, the trucks are coming out, and they're looking to see who's swiping the water. Well, Cinema's dad was not home. And I got this call, and I'm in a panic. You'd have thought we'd murdered people in the backyard. How panicked I was, right? Now, so, this was your inside source giving you a tip, right? Yeah, inside source for the guy from the water company. He says, I'm, I'm sure it's not you, but just thought I'd give you a heads up because <laughs> we've been nice to him all these years. So I had a friend with me, and I said, quick, we got to get rid of the pipe, and we got to unbury it. We had to unbury pipe. I mean, no evidence of anything, okay? And so we were scrambling around in the heat. Um, we, we got it finished and hidden um, it took us about, I don't know, about 45 minutes, just 10 minutes before they showed up. That's how close it was. So, you know, we never did it again. It wasn't worth it. I just, I just had never been so scared in my life. It's hard. And, I, and it's so funny. And then I was thinking about it later. You know, what could I have said, right? And I think the best thing to have said was deny it. I said, I have no idea. Um, you know, um, I had no idea that uh, who's, who, you know, uh, you know, I thank God you came, you know. I've tried to tell him, but I, I'm hostage here. I haven't been able to leave this place for months. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. I was going to make up some story like that. I was think just, um, and I thought, well, that's good. That's cheaper than a divorce, right? I'll just, uh, you know, they'll just take him, right? <laughs> just to haul him off, right? Isn't that terrible? But anyway. Oh, um, my. Uh, no, uh, you know, when Colby and I were first married, we went through some real struggles, you know. And uh, you know you're in trouble when you start planning people's eulogy. Just, gosh, I want, if what, he died, what would I say at the funeral? What, the first year or two you guys discussed this? Yeah, the first year, John. The first year, this is how bad it was. Wow. I mean, I stayed with this man for 23 years, but this is how bad it was the first year we were married. We fought like cats and dogs. And, um, I mean, it was bad. I mean, um, this don't get and, 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 and well, I don't either. And you know, he was ten years older, and you know, and and kind of violent, and a, a kind of it's not the word, you know. But the thing is, he didn't weigh any more than me, and it came really clear that you get violent with me, and bad things can happen to you. <laughs> you could get poisoned in the night. You could be sewn in your sheets, and then terrible things. You'd be at my mercy. You really don't want to mess with me. You know, we got that out of the way. It took a while, but we got out of the way because Ginger got her. You know, <laughs> that's all put up with that stuff, right? But Here's the thing, you know, but you do, you do put up with some, you know, verbal abuse or, you know, you know, there's certain things that you put up with just annoying people. And um, there we were. And we had gotten, yeah, so we were, um, there you were. There wasn't, um, we eventually, though I will say this, we eventually came to an accord where we got along pretty well. Um, I figured out things that upset him. And just uh, tried not to do that, you know, because it just wasn't where I don't like to fight with people. And I hate, I find that if I shout, here goes the lighter colors now, you guys, on top of the purple. See that? There goes Here's the lighter ones. Little wet. dots. They're not dots. They're, they're clumped together. This is the quadrichrome magenta and white. Okay, that's the magenta everybody can buy. Okay, here we go. And I'm leaving some little patches of dark shadow. All right, some of the patches of the dark are showing. Um, don't so do them in rows. Don't do them in rows. This is kind of random flowers. Okay. I know you sock folders were doom in rows. And, I certainly and, you know, would. And dots and stuff. You see, and this is still wet, so it's not as bright as we're going to make it yet. Okay. Because it's going over dark stuff. So anyway, yeah. So when we, when, so her dad was some um, challenge. Um, it's a wonder he, he's still alive. He's like 80 now. 81. Wow, huh? 81 and he calmed down I think when um, you know the, as happens to a lot of guys when the testosterone level kind of peaks off they're not as obnoxious you know I don't know but anyway he got a little better and I got better too because um, you know I got better at just not arguing and finding you know kind of figuring out how to get my way anyway you know just okay so I'm going to come back here but they're just going to be 
sort of just behind this tree. I'm not talking about it too much. Just sort of tapping this in here, suggesting flowers. Getting pretty, huh? You're going, wow, look at that. Yeah, that's what I said. Wow, look at that. So see how we're putting in the flowers now? We want, we got to go lighter still, but not bad. Okay, so let's take some, uh, let's clean the brush because we've got purple on it. We'll go somewhere else. Yeah, people, people, um, uh, I think, you know, when you get married young, like I did, I was 17, right? And uh, uh, I think I got married, you know, I got married way too young. I would say that. That would have, We didn't have cinnamon for five years, but um, but still, I got married way too young. I'm going to put a little ton of some orange flowers along the walkway here. I think that might be pretty. Put a little flower garden and maybe put some little orange ones and maybe some yellow ones over here. So um, that was... Let's put some lighter yellow flowers up in here, kind of half, kind of white and yellow. Tap some in here like that. Little clumps of yellow, like that, to sort of brighten up. This is a pretty, this is a pretty place. I don't know where this is, but who would want to be here, right? How about a little bit of yellow oxide for some um, shadow color on the flowers. Uh, here, here's a question from Debbie. I just finished doing the lemon, the lemon tree. Yeah. And I have a question. Yeah. I only have the Liquitec Basics, and as I painted this, I had to put multiple coats of paint on it, on the parts of it to get the coverage. Yeah. Would I have the same problem if I upgrade to heavy body paint when my budget allows? Uh, no. Again, this is kind of the answering kind of asked and answered, you know? Yeah. No, you don't. I mean, I think people ask that, and uh, you won't have the same problem. But you will if you use a lot of water. Yes, absolutely. You use too much water, and yes, you will. Um, you know, if you're, you know, a lot of it is um, how much water you're putting in your paint. You see, I don't, you don't see any water here, do you? I'm gonna light, I'm lightening up the the greens now with a more yellow, and um. And again, I don't know if you put a white down first. I mean, if you try to use basics over the dark color, that could be another problem. Yeah, I mean, there's just there's some you just there's definitely some t technique involved in in painting something like this. Okay. So let's see. Let's just get some brighter colors along here. Isn't it sort of cheerful? You know, it's, it's just looking sort of good. Just nice. Um, uh, you know, really I guess fine. we're not trying to do too much detail here, but you've got the sort of azaleas are pretty. They and you know, I, I think they're really nice and they grow places. And I think these are azaleas. If they're not, they should be. How about that? I'm going to take some a napa crimson and white now and make a pink. All right, um, just a nap, um, titanium just, just white. Just and white. Uh, now, yeah, so that's your pure that's your pure pink, okay? Now look what happens. If Brings I want to lighten these bit. up, see, I need yeah. to brighten these up some. Pretty color. That's pretty, right? That's a pretty color. Natural crimson and white, okay? If you want peach, you know how to make peach? You would just add yellow to this. Okay. So you so take your pink and add yellow. Pink and add yellow, and you'll get a nice peach tone. And the purple will tone it down because yellow and purple are gray. So those are kind of also skin tones. You see like that? So I'm going to just kind of connect this. You want the darker colors underneath. I think I got that a little bit light here. I'll have to put some dark next to it. All right, but here's some darker ones. Just touching, tapping. Anything like that. There you go. And let's, let's, oh, let's put some up here. It moved too much. I'm going to put a little magenta back there. That was a little crazy. All right, so I'm going to lighten these up with a little magenta and white. Magenta and white now and really make it lighter. That's a little bit back here. I don't want them quite so bright. Does that make sense? So we're lightening this up one more time, but it's just magenta and white and not the not the white. Let's just tone this down here and get this dark. Here's some pure magenta down in this area. Scoop some up and say here's some darker, darker flowers coming right off the edge of the canvas like that. Okay, so how about over here too? Let's darken up this. So it went over the darker purple color, kind of our stuff in the sand here. Now, um, I still feel like we need something lighter over here. When I'm just very tiny though now, just a few places, we're going to say there's some darker, some little lighter spots of color on some of these flowers. A bit darker underneath. And how about over here too? Let's we could certainly have some lighter colors falling over the walk like that. 
bring the bring this color over. I think maybe though I like the let's try a little bit of this. Uh, uh, this is a good color. Let's try some of this design magenta and see what that does. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Look at the difference in that color. Design magenta. Let's put some of that over here too. That's nice. Oh, isn't that beautiful? You get some really good colors with that. Isn't that different? Um, funny about reds. People say, you know, when do you need different reds? Um, and I want some. I want some of this to sort of come out over the path like that too. Just you know, just bring it out into the path in here like that. Something like that. Bring, bring that out. And let's bring some color back behind this tree. Oh, how about some orange? Let's, mm, no, that was a bad idea. Well, you know, you try it and decide. No, it's not so great. I probably want... Um, here, let's just wipe that off. Um, probably want some lighter green behind the tree, but I don't know if I want anything else. Here's some light green coming up here with a, a few places, some light green, almost a yellow. Just a few dots of this in these flowers. Kind of bring your eye forward. A little bit of light green right here into the path. So we're almost done with this. What do you think? You like I it? I think it's another bang up job. I, I've got to come back up here on top of our... Um, uh, let's get a light green going on top of our leaves up here now, too. Just lighten those up. You know, remember that saying, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. And if they're not, if they're too close to the same value as that purple, they're not going to show up. So let's just lighten up these leaves like that. So I'm trying to decide if I'd like some leaves. I think we're going to have to have some leaves on this side, too, though. Uh, from this tree, John? I, think we're I was gonna wondering have to bring, about that. We're going to have to bring some this way. Just a few. Missed a few, just to bring some up here like that. So anyway, um, I have to say that Cinnamon's dad and I are good friends. And, you know, I got old enough. I think when I got old enough, I just didn't put up with stuff anymore. And we got along pretty well. Um, we didn't get divorced because of domestic violence or anything like that. Um, we got divorced with over over philosophy. Uh, we got divorced because um, he had a different philosophy of how he thought. Um, he wanted to live his life, and I did. How's that? Well, that makes sense. And I didn't think that he should have to live the life the way I wanted to, to live mine. Uh, you know, he should have to change his way of living because I didn't want to live like that. And then you're going, well, what are you talking about, right? Well, uh, all right, let's just... Now, look, you wouldn't want a branch to end here. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to bring it down in front of the water like that. Do you see what I mean? You can't have it just end on the water line. So, um, yeah, so his, we had a bunch of investments and, and we were living, um, you know, very well and had it, well, not really, but kind of middle class and we were doing pretty much what we wanted. And uh, then all our, uh, one day, all our income just stopped. And he said that he would rather live on a cardboard box on a hill than get a job. And I said, if he wanted to live on a cardboard box on a hill, who would be I to stop him, right? But I wouldn't live in there with him. That I was perfectly happy if I had to get a job. I could do that. <laughs> and he said, well, I remember this is a direct quote. He says, your only skill besides painting is talking on the phone. He says, what are you going to do? And <laughs> really, he said that. And I said, well, then I'll find a job where talking on the phone has some merit. Guess what? And um, I did. I just, I absolutely did. I sold. I went and learned how to sell cars. And within three months, I had more cars sold than anybody else in the dealership. Never saw anything like it. Because they didn't understand that I could get behind shopping. I certainly understood why you if you were showing up at a car dealership. You certainly wanted to buy something. Well, why would you show up? Who? Would you, nobody just window shops at a car dealership. I mean, I guess some people do, but it's kind of rare. Usually, if they're there, going to buy it from somebody. The trick is, are they going to get it from you? That's the well, trick yeah, there's, there's a specific reason you're at the car dealer. You're right. You don't go window shopping at a car dealer normally. No, you don't. I'm going to break this tree up here too, just show a little, few little, you know, branches here and something here. So anyway, I found out I was very good at that, and I just enjoyed it. But it was really hard work and long hours. And I'm telling you what, it's very hard to, you know, you get back into painting. And um, I, I decided that at some point in my life, I would, if I was going to earn a living, I'd like to earn it through painting not through selling cars, and eventually I was able to do that. 
which I think is, was my ultimate goal. Um, there, I like in that tree. You like that tree? That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's, I like that. Like this tree. Here we go. This tree over here. Come on, tree. Happy tree. Like that happy tree. Ooh, that's kind of a neat green, isn't it? Right here on the hill. We got Marianne, who's a member of our Facebook group, is asking if you've seen a lot of people mention personal art coaching or PAC. What is all that about? Uh, personal art coaching is something that we, that's a good question. Personal art coaching is something that we offer our members. We have, a, we have two basic uh, uh, academy uh, courses. We have a Wave and Water Masterclass, and then we also have what we call our video lesson library, which is just a whole plethora of everything you ever wanted to paint from never painted anything, never picked up a paintbrush to uh, uh, advanced, very, very advanced uh, box of cookie lessons. One cookie meaning, you know, very basic to box of cookies and so forth. So uh, we offer that. And then to help you on your way, on your journey of painting, we... Um, um, I'm lightening this up as we're talking. Uh, what we do is we um, we offer personal art coaching, and what that means is you can send me um, as a, as your coach. You can send me uh, you know your painting as you're doing it, maybe, and then I will write back a few suggestions. And we're even now. This is so cool, you guys. You're going to be so excited about this. We are actually offering a video art coaching, which is now I'm actually doing shooting a video as I make suggestions and sort of sketch on things to make it to, so this is even more understandable and the and the and the gals that we've done this with the guys we've done this with have said that this has been the best thing ever they are so happy with this See, it's just like having stuff. you right there yeah it's like having me right there in their house um it's not that much different than i would do if you were at my house taking a lesson i would come by and say well do this that and the other and then you'd go do it so he's so except that you've got my voice in explaining it okay you got the voice and the visual aids because she's actually drawing it on the canvas or whatever she's working on, on the computer screen. Yeah. So I'm um, yeah as you're working. So I'm gonna just uh, come up here like this. Got to do something with this uh, hill here, uh, with the grass. I'm not real happy with this how this hill hill worked here. Let's just do that. Okay. This this, this hill's coming up here like that. All right, so that looks better. And let's kind of narrow this path down. You know, paths get narrower as they go back. Let's just get that real skinny here so you barely see it. Julie, Julie's asking, so to get the personal art coaching, do you have to be a member of the Facebook group or what? No, it has nothing to do with the Facebook group. Personal art coaching is just, um, uh, is you, have to be a, you have to be a member of our, you know, you have to be a, a sub monthly or, or annual subscribing member to our website, uh, to our art academy. It's actually Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, and it really is an amazing a, a bunch of lessons we've put together. We, I have to say, the progress I've seen people make. Um, we got to oh, keep coming up with harder lessons. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, I started off with some pretty basic stuff because everybody was pretty basic, and then they got better. And then I think, well, okay, try this. And then I thought, oh, okay, they try got this. better. So try this now. Try this now. And so we've really increased the skill. You know, the skills. That uh, you know that we're teaching. I mean, extraordinary. I mean, we never did even portraits before. Now we're doing portraits. Um, we're doing all kinds of things, and and we're showing you guys the best in acrylics and how to take take what we want. Well, lady wrote us today and said that uh, I, she'd sent me a painting and I'd sent it back and she'd sent it and I said that's good, but fix this. And then she sent it. I'm going, yeah, almost there. But what if you did this? And then she sent it back and forth. And her husband documented everything. It's so cute. And he was looking at her final piece. And he took a photograph of it and put it up on his personal Facebook page. This just happened, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And um, she sold that painting within ten minutes. And and people said, "Well, do you mind if you sell the artwork?" Well, you know, if you can paint this and you can, then someone buys it from you. I'm delighted. I'll tell you why. Because that means you can buy more. You can invest in more supplies. You can you can invest in yourself and your art because art is a wonderful way. You know, trying having taught a lot of things, art is a great way to supplement your income. And it's a great hobby. It's very relaxing. It's one of the few things, John, did you, I've talked about this before, getting a little mixing white here, kind of lightening up some water here. It's one of the uh, few things that um, actually reverses aging in the brain. Did you guys know that? Reverses aging in the brain. Oh, look at that. A little bit of light coming across there like that. So um, We could all use that. I mean, well, I think that that's pretty exciting, don't you? Let's get, get the, um Myself, I mean, I think that's really cool. I want to show you a little trick. 
Um, this is raw umber. See how white this, this tree is? It's a little stark white for me. Raw umber is a color that what you do is you um, put it on your brush. Let me get a clean brush that doesn't have anything on it. And a little bit of water, okay? Like that. Just a little bit of water. And you, it's called, and you just, what you do is you just, it's translucent. So you just sort of brush over it. And it will tone down. Just tone it down a little bit. And then you can kind of erase it a bit. I'll find a clean place like this. You can kind of erase some of it. Um, with a little water and it will just if you need something uh, not so bright and then you can take a little water in a couple places and just lift it up see like that and then you've got sort of this pattern on your tree very nice now look what happens if I put a little bit of raw umber on this walkway see like that and see how it sort of just you know kind of darkens the walkway here um, I don't think I need any on this tree but I mean I could put it on there all right so that's kind of how you do it. Well, that's kind of, I think, I'm pretty good with this picture. I wonder if I can't lighten up this background a little more. Um, I mean, just those back hills, John. Yeah. I'm thinking that they need lightened up a little bit. Um, well, how about just some pure mixing white? I needed those lightened up a bit. Those hills, there we go. There we go, just lighten that up. Okay. Way in the background, let's put a little tiny bit of purple with that. A uh, little bit of purple. Just wanted that, maybe a little tiny bit of dark purple. Kind of do a little contrast here. Okay, here we go. That's better. Okay, so then. Uh, looking at that, I would say we were in uh, good shape. I wouldn't think I wouldn't put much of anything else in here. I don't think. Um, it's looking pretty good. I mean, all right. So we took a design like this where we like the flowers, right? We took, you know, kind of took some of the trees and we changed it, and then we kept the path, changed it, and brought it up into a painting like this. So just just by sort of thinking about some different things we could do. Let's see. We want to put a few more pink flowers back up in here like that and I just again that's um I think that's kind of neat and then maybe I want to put a few light pink ones coming up this way kind of that has some dark ones there okay like that just bring some light pink ones Ooh, how about some yellow over here with white that might be pretty uh about something lighter in here Anna would like to know, when did your painting journey begin and how? Um, painting journey. Well, you know, she, I told you my mother died when I was, you know, 1947. And so I was adopted or sort of adopted by this couple, a judge and his wife. And Lucille was an artist. And she was a very difficult person to, um, to get along with. Um, and I, I didn't understand it. She drank, and so she kept changing personalities. As a kid, you just you just never know when somebody's going to just go off on you. You just don't know. The one thing I'll say about Cinnamon's dad was he was never he never drank, so he never got too screwy with me, right? But um, Punky drank, and uh, that was her nickname, Punky. And um, so, but but she did. She was uh, she was she took up painting late in life. Really liked it, and she saw I had art materials. Okay. So that was that was key here. She saw I had art materials and 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 wanted, uh, you know, uh, uh, encourage that and saw that I had art structures and that kind of thing. So I'd say as a kid, you know, in grade school, I started my art journey. My first real art teacher, his name was Mr. Isn't that funny how you remember teacher? His name was Mr. Lampson, and he wore pink pants to school. You know, no one pink explained. Pink pants. Pink wool slacks. They had sort of a tweed, but they were definitely pink. You know, and he he had us out there on the playgrounds looking for flying saucers at recess. <laughs> for real? For real. And I'm telling you what, I was I spent the fourth grade in t terror, right? Of things flying. Korean War was going on, and I'd see airplanes, and I wonder if those were the ones that were coming from Korea. Who knew how far away that place was? <laughs> fourth grade, you don't know anything. And then they had you getting under your desk during these horrible air raid sirens. 
if that would have done anything. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I really, say, I mean, yeah. that's what they had you doing, right? Yeah. And um, let's put a little yellow oxide in here, too. I'm just going to lighten up something in here like that. Sorry if we're talking. I feel like I needed a few, few little bops of yellow oxide. There you go. Oh, that's nice. So you kind of lighten this up. I think we're kind of done here, but it was sort of fun. And so anyway, yeah, so he had us um, um, out on the playground looking for flying saucers. And um, that was, and I don't think the parent. I don't know if the parents knew that or not, or maybe they thought it was harmless. They didn't know. I had nightmares. I never had nightmares in my life until then. And I had you know, had nightmares. And, of course, I remember that we were going to the movies and there were all these space scary stories, too. You know, these B-rated, um, you know, stupid stories. You know, outer space stories are so dumb. But, you know, as a kid, you know, there was one where the monsters were, uh, would suck people into the sand and you couldn't get me to walk on sand after that. Man, there could be anything <laughs> down there, right? You know, I, you just, you just kind of thing where, you know, you're at the age where if you leave your foot out of the covers, an alligator might eat it. Oh, you know, absolutely. You don't know where the alligator's coming from, but it could eat it. And anything could be under that bed. I mean, it's just bizarre. And, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it got, it was, and he just added to the tear. And he also, he came over to our house and he gave art lessons at my house too. My mother organized that on Saturdays. And he yelled and he screamed. He was really abusive and he yelled and he screamed at the students. And he was really mean, but uh, but I was the artist in his class. I had great favor. Um, great favor. Now my Aunt Sally later told me she thought my mother was, no, I know who was that was. My, um, yeah, I think it was somebody, it was Aunt Sally or somebody told me that she thought my mother was having an, had, had an affair with him at that time. Um, maybe that, but anyway, for whatever reason, he, he liked me, which was good, right? Um, uh, but he still was very scary, this man, extremely scary, yelling and screaming at the students, and it, they, they couldn't get away with that today, but boy, they sure could in those days get away with it. All right, that's our picture, you guys. I think I've kind of, I think I've sort of uh, done it. I don't know. We should give this a title. What should we call this, John? Got any suggestions on titles? I think we were calling it the Zalia Trail, but we could call it, um, this is a lake. What should we name this, uh? Well, I don't know. I feel like it should be have a name. Azalea Trail, you know, Lake, Lake Azaleas. I don't know. Should have we'll some have sort of name. Thought. All right. Well, we'll come up with something, and I'm sure we'll get some comments in. We can't change it too much once we put the video up, uh, because uh, then then it, YouTube can't find us anymore. Okay. So kind, of let's gets, see. kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Yeah, it gets indexed. lost. You have to be kind of careful. You get you get a window when you can name things, and after that, it's it's worse than the, the driver's license people. You know, <laughs> this is what you called it. This is what you are. Now remember, you can if you get too carried away with your. Um, remember, I told you that before. You can always put a little sky back. Punch holes through the leaves. Punch holes through the leaves. If you got too carried away, don't forget you know how to do that, right? Like that. So there we go. Because the birdies have got to fly through it. Birdies have got to fly uh, through your tr through your leaves enough. Now here's an example of something. If that was a, um, I don't even have any brown anymore. Maybe I can use some of this burnt, this raw umber. I'm just right under here where this is. Um, it might be a little darker where that. Um, there on this side. There you go. Something like that. Where that show that this light, this branch is sticking out coming out there. All right, that was just my little thought on that. Here we go. There's something like that. And again, I got that too bright. Well, I'll fix it. All right, so this is it. I'll quit. I'll stop messing with this so we can sign it. And um, anyway, so well, this was a fun thing today. And I have to say that um, for um, for uh, for everybody that uh, is, is liking painting and enjoying this, I hope you are giving yourself a break. You are learning different styles. If one style is easier for you than another, that's fine. You know, you might just branch out and try some of these other ways to paint something. You might surprise yourself at what you find fun to paint and what you don't like. You know, that, you know, it all becomes a personal preference at some point. So, anyway. Here we go. This is it, you guys. Thanks very much for watching. And 
Oh, what are we going to do? I don't think we're doing a giveaway this time, John. Were we? Well, what about a 21-day giveaway? Oh. Give people three weeks to... Well, all right. Uh, what about one of these, John? Why don't I work on one of these a little bit, sort of touch it up, and let's give away one of these. We have two of them. All right. All right. We're going to give away one of these. How's that? What we're going to do, do we'll put the link up here on the, well, on the board be for a, you. Um, here, let's just lighten up this path here. See, we're going to play with some of the stuff that we talked about in this one. We're going to lighten up this path a bit. Like that. And there we give go. one of these, right? So how are they going to win one of these? This will be for anybody that's watching this. You don't have to it watch watching it, it live. You don't have to. It won't be a live one. You'll have 21 days. So uh, I think it's... We'll check your calendar on that. Yeah. We'll just start, I'm going to touch up some of these flowers now with some of these magenta colors. I think they're so pretty. Let's do some magenta on these. I think these were more reds, but let's just change All right, it. now through March 19th, if you want to enter this, go to that uh, link right there on the bottom of the screen, and the secret word is 21 days. Okay, so um, I'm going to, um, just again, you see how I'm going, these were kind of in the oranges, and we're going into the magentas on these flowers here like that. So you're getting a little more pinky. Yeah, just kind of change them. Azaleas are, um, mine is azaleas, we have them in our house, they're kind of sad, but we have some bushes, azalea bushes, and um, you they know, smell just, good. Do azaleas smell good? I don't think so. No? No, they don't smell, but they, they're pretty, but they're Houston, of... they last in some parts of the world, you know, like in some states, they last Is a long time. Little... Houston, they're here for about two weeks, and they're gone. You well, have this bush lilacs. the whole time, and they just, the lilacs are the ones that smell. Yeah. These just don't do anything. Um, but they, will they, they some, look pretty. Well, they're pretty, and, they, but, and, and we have something in Houston called the Azalea Trail, and the newspaper always publishes that, or sometimes you can probably get it on YouTube now, and they tell you the houses that, you know, there's certain neighborhoods that have these old azalea bushes, and they're just stunning. You know, let's get some a little bit darker here with the purple. Um, just absolutely stunning. I want to darken up some of these in here like this. Get some darker stuff going here. We'll sort of, there we go. Let's get rid of this red and put some purple in here. That's nice, right? You kind of see me. I like that. Kind of. Yeah, it's interesting. If you change the color scheme, how that can change a picture. Isn't that sort of interesting? You know, nothing too different, but we just uh, changed what we were saying happened in the picture with some nice light ones here. Um, light ones on top. Uh, you'll notice I'm constantly going back to get paint. I'm dropping this on here. And if I make two strokes and I don't have any paint on the brush, then I'm picking up more. And I'm picking up little dots of globs of this on the end of my brush and doing this. Okay, so see, see how I'm just sort of doing the tops of these lighter? I kind of like this now, don't you? Kind of a nice companion piece. You now know how to paint this, don't you? Because I showed you how to paint this. And that, uh, right? Now look how these are kind of going together. Look at that, see? Could this uh, trail have, you know, somehow joined this one? If you made this one the same size, could you say that these were, um, this trail ended up here? You could. I mean, you know, if you like stories, like, you know, we've got one gal on our Facebook uh, group, and she tells us the best stories. She's all about Indiana Jones and finding the lost keys, and I don't know what her deal is, but we all read her stories avidly, and they all go with her paintings, and it's great fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, so it's good to that. have a story with a with a painting. See now, look that look at that did. I, I, I want to just show you the difference. Look. See? No, no, wait, wait, wait. Let me turn off the palette cam so I got room for everybody. Look there we that. go. Look at the difference. See? And those were identical. Yeah. So look at the difference. Uh, just a few changes can make. I'm really, um, it's hard to believe. But just and let's take a little brush like this, a little pointed brush, and let's uh, break up some of this. Um, I can't believe you did it. Yeah, I mean, you just, um, I mean, it just does make a difference. It really it makes a, a lot better painting now. Yeah, it's a better painting. And, and what did we change? Just a few colors of the flowers. You know, maybe we'll change a few uh, greens here, too. So this goes back to the old question, is the painting ever done? Well, you know, you could... Not with ginger. The thing about it is, is that, you know, if you did a painting a few years ago, leave it alone. <laughs> That's an example of where you were then, and this is where you are now, right? All right, so, how, old, how old is this one? This one I think we did with Marsh Scoops about four years ago. Yeah. And we were doing it, you know, for kids. Yeah. We were trying to keep it really yeah, simple. Yeah, our first audience was kids. I mean, 
We were tickled pink when we had 10 people on our show. Yeah, really, 10 people. And, and you know. Uh, and now we're pushing four, five, six hundred. Yeah. So, um, absolutely. Oh, I like that. I like that. Adding, yeah, lining that up the, the forest. Just in a couple places, right? Just in the front, you know, where, where, we're, where we're coming together here like this. You just probably want it more. Let's say probably too bright green. It can be light, but maybe it's a little bit too mint green. Let's take a little yellow oxide with it. Still wet, mix it right there on the on the canvas. Yeah, just mixing it right on the canvas and putting a little on the brush. Now these are six by eight canvas, genuine full fledged gessoed cameras canvas. Yes. Oh, and and Jerry's has got a sale on. Well, had a sale going. Who knows how long they last? But I, they, I, we've seen them as low as. Um, Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter to buy them, you know, and there's 10 sheets. I wonder if we need they're, any more. They're good practice. People always say, why do you want such a little canvas? I like 16 by 20 or whatever. Um, they're really good practice. You, you want something like this um, because, um, let's see, I want to darken up this um, tree trunk. Well, one, here. you get to learn how to paint without using a lot of paint. Yeah, you, yeah, you learn this, you learn the technique. And um, the other thing is, is that you, um, uh, Besides the technique, you save you, and you save paint. Okay, you, you definitely save money on paint. I'm just too blue here. I wanted to darken this up here. Well, who? Here, I didn't really want blue. I wanted brown here, dark brown. Okay, there we go. Just didn't think I had the values here that I wanted it. And then I'm going to lighten it up as it goes up the trunk here, see if I can find. Uh, color that I want. Lighten up a little bit lighter brown coming up the trunk. I need some green here. Okay. Alright, just kind of lighten that tree up a bit. That's what we want to do. Yeah, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of reasons why the small canvases are good. And someone said, well, how do you frame them? Well, maybe you wouldn't frame them. I mean, if you're going to frame them, just take some foam core and glue them to them. And they Jerry sells frames this size, and then somebody said, this I read this the other day, and, and fa this is why we love our Facebook group so much, is they, they keep us informed, you guys, of good ideas. Okay? Really, really keep us informed of ideas that are quite quite good. And um, and she, they were saying that, um, uh, that if you go to Michael's, if you have a Michael's where you live, they've got some mats and uh, frames um They've got a mat that's eight by ten, uh, with a six by eight opening. Oh, okay. And so then you could then so they had a mat it, around it, and you put a mat around it. And of course, you could these are so flat, it would be very pretty to mat these. Okay. Well, speaking of that, let's um, let's just skinny up this trail a bit here, like that. Make that a little smaller as we go back. Okay. We could just we make these little improvements as we go. Okay. Let's. Make some little green stuff coming out of the trail like this. We've got the little brush here like that. There you go. Something happening there. Kind of corral those in. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's a good, so you can frame. We should show that, John, how to do that. What, 8 by 10? Yeah, we'll show how to do it with a mat and everything. We, we can should, do that. We're going to do that. That could be okay. a tech bear video. Yeah, we're going to we'll, we'll make some bear. of those. And, of course, I've got a very fun video on YouTube on how to frame. It's really funny. It's, got some, it's very funny, but, you know, how you can oh, take it. Oh, it drove me nuts. I'm still up in Michigan. And she's trying to use a, a little triangle punch. Mm. I was yelling and yelling at it. It didn't do any good. She didn't hear me. No. Um, all right, so there you go. That's, that's, that's what we're giving away for the... Um, um, you know, 21 day, 21 giveaway. day giveaway. So I hope you enjoy this. We'll, um, you do not have to be present to win it when we draw it. Do make sure you put your email in address accurately. Otherwise, we will not be able to get a hold of you if you are the lucky winner. Okay. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's right. Yeah, we, we, we need your email address. We will not put you on any mailing list. It costs too much to mail anybody anything. If you want to be on our newsletter, you have to tell us. Otherwise, if you don't, you don't want to be on it, do tell us that so we can remove you. If yeah, you we just it. we just can't. You know, 
we cannot afford to be doing newsletters for people who don't want to be on them because it, MailChimp charges us for everybody we mail to. So, you know. Yeah, the number of subscribers you have to dictates your bill, and it's not cheap anymore. You All right, you guys, that's that. our picture. I think that's kind of good. I I'm think going to tie both of these. And I hope you enjoyed our uh, 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 video lesson today, or tutorial. hope this was fun. Um, we certainly enjoyed Park, you being uh, here. And don't forget to like and subscribe our um, uh, to our channel. And, you know, our Facebook page, Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club, is a fun place to be. And what I'm so loving is seeing the fabulous paintings that everybody's doing. It's so inspiring. If I, you know, I'm just kind of talking to the air here, you know. I assume someone sees this, but, you know, I don't <laughs> see you. I feel like I see you. I feel like I'm sitting right there in the living room with you, but, and maybe you do too, but that's not really reality. I'm just all here by myself, except for John here. And, I was going to say, what am I, chopped liver and, over here? Well, no, Chester and Sammy, but still, you know, it's just when you guys, when someone hears what I say and turns around and creates a beautiful painting from a lesson, that brings me great joy. It just makes me tear up really nice. Love you guys. Thanks, everything, and uh, happy days. Bye. Bye, everyone. So now we have to find the right buttons to push. Ready, Sammy? Don't keep smiling. You're on the <laughs> camera still. Keep smiling. <laughs> keep smiling. There it is. You're blocked. All right. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.